The Crypto Street Podcast is hosted by Crypto Dale, Prince, and Killer Whale, who can be found on Twitter at Crypto Dale, at Killer Whale, K1LLERWH4LE, and at 13Prince31. None of this should be construed as investment advice. For information on how to join our private telegram group, The Pod, please email tcsp at protonmail.com. The Crypto Street Podcasts are officially sponsored by 21 Cryptos, the world's first and only cryptocurrency trading magazine. Visit 21cryptos.com and enjoy 50 plus pages of pro tips and predictions and analysis of the best 21 coins to invest in for the month, trading lessons and articles from your favorite pros, price action event calendars, entertainment, and lots more. Stay ahead of the game and get your copy today. Visit 21cryptos.com. Yo, what's up? Welcome, everybody, to a new episode of Crypto Street Podcast. want to thank you all for joining in. Uh, tuning in with us and got another great guest today but my name is crypto dale right now i'm currently santa claus dale though so handing out gifts left and right don't dm me dm crypto nike he'll handle he'll sort it all out uh as long as you're on the nice list as always i'm joined with killer whale hey everybody prince hey guys and actually our our, our guest today is one of my favorite crypto twitter personalities he was when it was when I first started, he was my goal. It says, "Okay, I'm gonna get this dude to follow me back, whether I have to shill all of his shit that he <laughs> shills, or whether I just gotta DM him constantly." We got Crypto Donnie with us tonight, Donnie Crypto. Hey, th- thanks so much for the introduction, Dale. And you didn't do so much of that, but some other folks like Crypto Randy Marsh relentlessly DM'd <laughs> me to follow. <laughs> Uh, so most appreciated you being genuine and him genuinely just trying to shill the fuck out of himself. And, uh, thanks for having me on. Dude, he always is constantly shilling himself, isn't he? Yeah, he's unbelievable. Even today I was trying to educate someone of the crypto community, a new person, and provide him with a BitMEX referral link. And he, and he just flies in with his, <laughs> providing no value whatsoever. And I had to report his tweet. I mean, it was no just totally out of line. I, I I couldn't believe the audacity that he had to just fly in and, and try to just swoop in after I just educated this person and provided with a wonderful link uh, to the great site of BitMEX. Shout out to BitMEX.com. Uh, if you're not there, PM me at Tony Crypto on Twitter, 10% off your fees for the first six months. And I'll probably Son dump on you. Bitch. And I'll probably dump on you at some point on there. But of nice, hey, onefox.ca, nice. by the way. Of course, you shouldn't be in the United States doing it, though. So, right. Oh yeah, confirmed. Yeah, uh, from the great from the great country and the great republic and the great kingdom of of Thailand is where I recommend. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so Donnie, how we kind of start every interview is we ask this pretty much the same question. Everyone that's listening, you know, you're a, a big Twitter personality. How how did you get into crypto? What kind of was it that uh, maybe caught your eye early on in the game that you decided, you know, okay, I'll throw some money on here and and kind of have a go at it. Yeah, so in 2013, I was gifted some Bitcoin by a good friend in college. Uh, I'd, I had six or seven of them. Didn't really think too much about it. Saw them increase, didn't sell, just held them. And then in 2016, I discovered that uh, one of the online sites in America called America's Card Room began accepting Bitcoin. I had supported myself through college by playing poker. Shout out mom that thought I had jobs, didn't have jobs. Um, uh, and then... Um, yeah, I, I kind of just got into poker online in America was the only way to do it. So I funded it with Bitcoin. And then, yeah, from there, I discovered altcoins and started investing in some of those. And ultimately, in January, I decided to quit my job and, and do this full time. So speaking of, there's you know not a lot of people out in, in the crypto Twitter space are, are full time crypto. With you just saying that you, you recently kind of quit your job. So how did you make that transition and what kind of factored into to you deciding, okay, I'm working a nine to five or eight to five, whatever the hell you were. What kind of made you think, you know, okay, f- fuck this. Let's really dive into crypto full time and, and really put full force into that. Well, when I first quit in January, it, it, I didn't have too, too much of a plan. I had some Bitcoin and, you know, I had poker and I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew that it was really, really just 
absolutely miserable going to a job every day. You know, you have to sit there and your income's capped. You have to listen to people all day and you don't really have any autonomy over what you want to work on or, or projects you want to pursue. So in January, you know, I had a good chunk of money. I had roughly uh, forty to $50,000 saved up and I ultimately decided to quit, take on this full time, see where it went. And in February, I started really getting very deep into altcoins. Uh, I talked to my friends. I was like, hey, I think you guys should buy this thing called Ethereum. That obviously worked out really well. Uh, we made heaps of money on it. And I've just been going at altcoins ever since. Um, I had some purchases in 2016. I was I was part of Railblocks, which is cool. Shout out Railblox. They're, they're up heaps this year. Um, and yeah, I kind of just, just decided that I think – Cryptocurrency is going to be the future, and I think I want to be a part of it, and I think it'll be this really cool technology that can make a lot of people a lot of money. So I, I dove in. So with with you saying on the future aspect, we're going to touch base quick. Where do you see cryptocurrency, not just necessarily Bitcoin or Ethereum, maybe some alts and whatnot? Where do you see that? What road do you see that heading down? It's going to be an integral part of everyday life. When you think about the way Bitcoin can potentially affect our lives – Let's say you are a United States citizen. You're looking to travel to Switzerland to go skiing for the week. You don't really necessarily want to transport $10,000 because the government limits how much money we can take on an airplane in cash, but you may want to make some purchases. You may want to look at real estate. You may want to purchase designer clothing while you're over there. Bitcoin provides a very seamless way to transport lots of money overseas to make purchases without the need to kind of essentially gain permission from the government to say, oh, well, I want to buy something expensive, so I need to take a lot of money on this plane. Um, so I think you know more and more areas where modern government and banking systems have made it a little bit difficult to transport large sum of mon- sums of money is where Bitcoin itself will be really applicable. And exploring the cryptocurrency market as a, from a broader perspective, you look at Things like Litecoin where you can look at the remittances. So let's say you're a tequila company in Mexico and you need to do remittances with some of your suppliers. Rather than going through a banking system and having banks potentially hold your money if it's cross-border for you know a couple of weeks, you can simply say, OK, well, uh, I'm going to pay in Litecoin. I'm going to pay 15 cents for my transaction and it's going to be done instantly. So I think you know there are a lot of very interesting opportunities for cryptocurrencies out there. Uh, that have yet to be explored because of the volatility in the market, but over the next half decade, decade will ultimately surface. Yeah, real quick, I think you touched on that autonomy. Um, that's super important because, I mean, part of what kind of surprised me about crypto is not just the monetary aspect, but it's an entire community and it's this, this entire mindset, you know, behind I want to be my own sort of individual person. And I think it, you kind of saw that in the elections, at least in the U.S. in this past year, where two pretty unpopular candidates overall, you know, if we're talking about both of them, not to get all political. Um, but I think it, it, more people, more and more kind of taking this libertarian mindset, which goes hand in hand with crypto hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, uh, over the election, if you, if you took a random sample of American citizens, most were dissatisfied with both candidates that they had offered to them. hundred percent. Yeah. And I think crypto is sort of this rejection of, the norm of a two-party system in this dichotomy of Republicans and Democrats saying, hey, well, we don't think the system's working too well for us. We're going to actually revamp this entire system and the people itself are going to take it over. It's, it's really interesting. I, I, I follow Andrew DeSantis on Twitter, at DeSantis, if you don't follow him. Very, very intelligent guy. But he constantly comments that he's both a capitalist and a communist at the same time. And I've sort of adopted the same ethos in that You know, I believe everyone should have an equal say within uh, the the, the socioeconomic and political system. But you should also have a capitalist mindset where it's still a meritocracy, where you still have the freedom to make as much money or as little as money as you'd like. Um, So I think that's a a very unique opportunity that cryptocurrency as a space provides uh, the modern society. Yo, speaking of politics, Bullydale 2020. (laughs) Yeah, shut up, <laughs> Donnie. Do you really? Crypto bill, at crypto, but yes, vote for them. At, at, at crypto Billy smells like sulfur, like Hillary Clinton, so it's okay. <laughs> hey, oh. Uh, so, so go, let's go back to alts here a little bit, Donnie. Um, when you're pulling up an alt and, and, and you know investigating, so to say, if, if it's something you want to invest in, how do you value those arts alts? What are some things that you look for that maybe sets apart? You know, like a 
Lux, who is fantastically awesome, or like uh, Doge, <laughs> that's complete dog shit, say. Yeah, so there are a few things Doge that I look shit. at. I, I tend to use a framework that's been refined after doing this for you know a year plus. Um, the first thing I look through is the Telegram community. What What type of support does it have from a crowd perspective? Part of the reason I am so bullish on Bitcoin is I believe this community is filled with intelligent people and I tend to not only base my own opinion off my own thought process, but off the thought process of many other intelligent people. So that's the first thing that I look at. The second thing that I look at is what is this doing for the community that another large project is not always doing? So if you look at Bitcoin, you look at Ethereum, they have certain value propositions. So does this particular coin offer a value proposition that's not already offered in the market? And then lastly, and this is sort of, I, I guess there is some quantitative uh, analysis to it, but has it already pumped in the past? So is there a psychological component where there might be a large market share, a, a large market of people that have purchased this coin at the tippy top? So for instance, with Ripple, when they announced that Swell conference, theoretically, that should be a major catalyst. They're charging, they're, they're challenging Swift. They're trying to take over a specific market within settlement, within clearing, and it didn't really pop like a lot of crypto Twitter expected. A lot of big names, Carpe Noctum, myself, a few others really kind of thought that Swell would push Ripple over the edge, push it into a dollar, two dollars, and a lot of people would make a lot of money and kind of flopped. So those are the three things. It's, it's basically, does it have a strong community? Does it do something that Bitcoin or Ethereum doesn't do? And is it really something that people can get excited about? Yeah, for sure. Um I know a lot of people kind of say that they, you know, there's what 1300 and some currency or uh, cryptocurrencies you can buy. I know a lot of people kind of say most of the time or 99% of them are going to fail eventually. Um, not that you're recommending any of these or that you necessarily hold any so that they, to avoid, you know, maybe pumping them. But what coins do you think are, are altcoins are going to be here to stay or through your investigation? What are some that, you maybe like or favor or towards the other. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mention specific coins, but I will mention markets that um, there you go. I, I think make the most sense. Um, I think privacy is a huge one. As government increasingly permeates our life with influence, you want to be uh, making as much as your life private as possible. So things things that emphasize privacy and protocols that emphasize privacy are going to be huge. Uh, the second thing is going to be healthcare. Um, so with healthcare, there are a ton of manual processes involved where, let's say, I am a patient in a dentist office, and you're putting a physical copy of my dental records into a file. Uh, it would be super easy if there was some sort of software product out there that simply said, okay, well, we have access to all of your dental and medical records like that. Um, and then the third thing, in my opinion, is, is anything having to do with audit. So ensuring that um, businesses are acting in an honest way and that there is a trustless third party that isn't necessarily paid to audit their books or their business and basically ensuring that the, the business is operating in a fair and balanced way. Um, I think you know, those are the three areas where blockchain technology will be very applicable. And I don't need to specify product, uh, specific projects, but if you Google and you research around and you see which projects are interested in these areas – I think you'll start to see, okay, well, these are the projects that might have very strong long-term value. How many DMs do you get? I think doing your own research is one thing that I probably tell people that are entering the space. You know, I mean, I did a lot of my own research, so I, you know, and my time's valuable to me. So I kind of tell people that when they're entering, you know, the first thing you need to do is do your own research and then you can come to me with other, with questions that you may have. Um, so I think that's very, very important also. Uh, talk kind of about what you, what programs and websites you use aside from, you know, the coin market cap that you use to, to track portfolio balances or do some research on the coin token, whatever it is. Yeah, so there are definitely a couple. Um, I use my own. I've written some scripts that'll scrape Telegram, Twitter, Medium, what have you to figure out what's going on in the community and, and apply some sentiment analysis as well. Um, one of the, one of the big tools that I use to kind of double check my own research is coin market Cal. It's a free tool on the, on the web and he'll essentially crowdsource different coins 
uh, different information on different coins and kind of uh, leave it up to the community to say, oh, is this legit or not? And if it is, okay, great. We're going to publicize this on our site and and provide a score of how legit it is. Um, The second thing that I use is fork.lol. And what that is really useful for is identifying when it'll be more difficult or more profitable to mine Bitcoin cash versus Bitcoin. So that'll provide overall market sentiment, whether you should be considering positions in Bitcoin cash or whether you should be considering uh, positions in Bitcoin. Um, The last thing that I'm really high on is uh, just looking at the blockchain and figuring out the hash power of kind of some smaller coins. I think one thing that people really tend to forget is that there are miners in these proof of work coins and they have supply to bring to the market. And as hash power increases on certain lower cap coins, it'll generally the price of the coin as more supply enters the market, as more people find interest in thinking, okay, well, if suddenly there are a whole bunch of people mining this coin, there must be a reason. It must be interesting. So why don't we figure out why that is and then hopefully purchase some up before it gets noticed by the general population. Um, so less so a site, but more so just looking at the hash rate and hash power of every individual coin. Yeah, real quick, something you touched on there reminds me of something that I just talked to my dad about today, which is this concept of reflexivity, which is a concept from finance, which is essentially – you can kind of will something into existence. Like you talk about a low cap coin where it might be a dog shit project. It might literally have nothing going on behind it. But if enough people purchase into it and make enough money on it and have a vested interest in it, it can actually become something purely because those people really want it to. So they're going to have a vested interest in doing that. They're going to spread the word about it, pump it. And you know that monetary gain that they might get from that coin pumping could lead to actual developmental support um, and I think that's very important because a coin going up, that in and of itself is a sense of funding or a source of funding because the founders of that coin have a lot of that coin usually. So the more that coin is going up in value, the greater their war test is for deploying resources for improving that protocol. Of course, shout out IOTA. Uh, even, <clears throat> shout out IOTA most recently for doing this. Yeah, I think even, um, you know, touch on that theory kind of, of reflexivity. Uh, everyone should check out the piece that George Soros wrote on it. Um, I think it's extremely interesting, and I think it would do everyone some good. I know it did me some good just reading it, so check that out. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, like him or hate him, the guy is a pretty good investor, and there are some oh, concepts yeah. you can take from his thought process, which will improve your investing process as well. Yeah, do what the greats do. Yep. All right, so we're going to move on to what we call quick hitters or fast answers, Donnie, where I'm going to ask something to you. Uh, not Most of it's non-crypto related, so people can kind of get to know you maybe on a more personal level. It's all, <laughs> okay. it's all good. So I'm going to ask you, and then you're going to answer. You, you Just an answer, no explanation, okay? Can I, can I answer crypto, Billy, for everything? <laughs> sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> all right. Favorite? We'll disconnect you if you do. <laughs> uh, favorite non-crypto activity? Uh, football. American football. Fuck yeah. Yeah, right. yeah I, I agree. Uh, Touch tackle, oh, flag, semi-tackle, rugby, uh, which isn't really American football, but I love – I play football my whole life. I love hitting people. <laughs> okay uh favorite bar game favorite bar game like uh, uh so i play so I, I play a very unique bar game and i play a really fun bar game where i try to get a girl's number after hitting on her <laughs> and then i like to i like to memorize it right in front of her to mess with her a little bit and generally i'm pretty good at like if she tells me her number and i can tell her i can memorize it under five seconds that's awesome i'd like that I like a lot that. too your favorite bar drink Bar yeah, drink. when you walk into a kettle bar, one, what what do you order? A kettle one, three shots, in a pint glass with club soda and two limes. Interesting. Nice. Might have to try that. Uh, yeah, look, yeah. Look, look, low calorie and uh, always uh, always gets you pretty drunk for very cheap. Hey, yo, by the way, if nobody doesn't, if anybody doesn't know, this Kettle One is like the best vodka for your value. Like them and Tito's, if you drink vodka and you're not buying those two, then go fuck yourself. 
<laughs> shout, out, shout out Kettle One. Please give me a sponsorship. I have 15,000 followers on Twitter. <laughs> uh, me too. I have 12,500, so uh, probably less than Donnie, but I'll take it this time to rate. Slightly less, slightly less. Me three. I have 4,500, but I'll buy 30,000 if I need to. <laughs> shout out every no Twitter. Time. Don't worry. Shout out every Twitter trader that's decided to buy followers and to quiet and and vehemently <laughs> is. Oh, I've never bought followers in my life. But shout out like well, having you have to deny like unless followers. there's yeah you have to deny though unless there's irrefutable proof like I, I, deny till you die. You know there's no reason to admit. Went it. back in the corner. Yeah, it's why. a hard thing to prove. Shout out twitteraudit.com. You can figure out which people bought their fucking followers. Uh, uh, I think that website's a scam. I think there's a virus when you go there. So, uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, pizza or tacos? Oh, dude, pizza, my man. And I'm gonna show something right now. If I live in New York City, if you are ever in New York City, there are two places you need to go for pizza. One in Brooklyn is called Lucali's. Uh, my my old roommate from high school uh, on debate trips, his uncle owns it. It is incredible pizza. Beyonce and Jay-Z go there. I've eaten there tons of times. So that's Brooklyn. And if you are in Manhattan or Staten Island, where I'm from, uh, Danino's Pizza is out of this world. It's unbelievable. You'll spend 20 bucks on a pie, split between two people, and you're going to have the best pizza experience you've ever had in your life. You want to add some fried calamari to that, you're going to be rocking and rolling real hard. Hey, real quick, Donnie, have you ever had two boots in Grand Central? Two Boots is a chain, man. It's okay, but it's uh, it's decidedly not as good as the aforementioned Two Pizzeria is. Okay. All right. I really like Two Boots. I grew up in New York, um, so I'm pretty familiar with the pizza scene around there. It's like it makes where I currently live in L.A. like it's an absolute joke. Like the best slice you can find in L.A. is as good as the average slice in New York City. Right, right. It's like the 4 a.m. I'm completely hammered sliced <laughs> at two rows. Oh, uh, yeah. And, and yeah. also the other thing is like it, the slice in, in L.A. costs you four times as much as the one in New York. And it's uh, not that, even as good. Wait, it's not even like a dollar fifty to two dollar slice? Oh, dude. It's like four twenty five literally for a slice of pepperoni. What? <laughs> dude. Yeah, I know. Absurd. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys want to hear something. It's ridiculous. Banff, Alberta. Nice tourist town. Wicked place. One of the best places uh, in the world for tourism. You know, if you ever want to go into Canada, you definitely got to check it out. Slice a pizza there, and you get drunk, and you want your pizza slice. It's like six dollars for a slice of pizza. <laughs> Canadian or American? <laughs> it's highway robbery. Canadian. So cheaper for you guys, yeah, yeah. Canadian. For the record, I am banned from Canada. That's like thirty cents, Prince. <laughs> My monopoly. You're money. on that Zimbabwe currency. Yo, yeah. shout out Robert Mugabe for for making Bitcoin have a use case. All right, last one. <laughs> or not bully, I'm sorry, Donnie. Mets or Yankees? Oh, dude, come on, man. Is that even a real question? Cubs, then? The New York <laughs> goddamn Yankees with 26 <laughs> world championships. Hey, guys. Let's fucking go. Guys, come on. Randy's calling me right now. Should I get it? Who? Uh oh. Hey, Randy. Yeah, Randy. answer it. Oh, God. What's up, bitches? <laughs> what? Are you fucking What's going me? on, man? What are you calling in? <laughs> What up? Crypto Street Podcast, we out here. Crypto Randy Marsh. <laughs> oh my How'd it go? Oh my god. What the I didn't, wait, are there, there Collins it's on the going show? Off the rails. Randy, are you Yankees or Mets? Mets all the way. Oh god. Oh, yo, I was going to say, I bet Randy's a Mets oh, fan. Oh yeah, total I was Mets really fan. I was like, he looks like a Randy's Mets fan. Randy's a Mets fan. That's how you know he buys my bags constantly. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie, I will never buy your Always bags. Always losing. Okay? <laughs> okay, only once or twice. <laughs> Donnie Dunks. <laughs> Damn, we got Randall Marsh with us right now. In the flesh. A twist. What's happening, what guys? Call? What was, uh, give me some of the updates on the podcast. Give me something. You mean you haven't been listening? No. Oh, my <laughs> God. Jeez. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> this guy right here. We were talking pizza places in podcast. New York. Randy, what's your thoughts? Slash Warren. Best pizza places in New York City? Yep. Best pizza. Yeah, best pizza places in New York City. Oh, man. I don't know. I don't know. What did you say, Donnie? So there are two. Luke Colley's in Carroll Gardens. Shout out Luke Colley's. And then Danino's, which has locations in Staten Island, my hometown, and Manhattan in Greenwich Village. <laughs> Highly recommend both. And I'll take you on a date to Danino's in Greenwich Village at some point. How cute. 
Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I work over there. I work near there, so we can uh, we can definitely get up in Greenwich Village. Oh yeah, you know, I like this spot right by my apartment. Um, a couple of spots by my apartment called um, I forget the name, but there's some good spots around here. <laughs> Question: Everyone's probably wondering, listening to this. Will you guys sit on the same side of the booth? Yeah, and, and and I'll have to wrap my fingers around his fingers because I think he has small hands like our president. <laughs> Dude, he's got total whopper hands. I was, I've seen him before. Dude, I was kind of imagining like opposite sides of the booth and like somebody starts on the crust, the other one on the tip part, and it's just like they meet in the middle in an odd way. And whoever's on the crust our, is just our, eating our hands, way more of the pizza. It's so very uneven. Get, both so of us go to, to pay, pay for the tip and our hands slowly <laughs> scoot up each other's wrists until they interlock. <laughs> and it's just such a beautiful embrace that we're that we start imagining we're walking down the aisle and and rose petals when being thrown on top of us. Your eye like a big pizza. <laughs> like None of this a big is happening. Pizza by that someone. <laughs> is that true, Randall? <laughs> no, none of this is going to happen except for Donnie might buy me some pizza. That's all hey, I know. I'm on a budget, man. You're going to have to split that with me. <laughs> I'm going to go Dutch. Donnie, man. what was the big trade today? What was your big trade of the day? 24 hours. Uh, biggest trade today? Uh, we had a 20x long from 13,000 up to uh, 13,250 for roughly 3 million contracts on the great site of bitmex.com for a profit of like 52k. <laughs> Never heard of it. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. IRS, IRS if you guys want to on trade on Bitmex, you can use my that wrestling. Is all on Testnet. <laughs> you have demo yeah, accounts. Just demo just, accounts uh, only. Bitmex. Bitmex where is where not do you locate this United website? States. It sounds Mexican. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Bitmex. I actually need to travel to Playa del Carmen every day to make trades. <laughs> <laughs> Are you trading in Spanish? <laughs> exactly, exactly. He's, Hola. he's fluent. Uh, yo quiero Hola, yo cuatro bitcoin. Uh, un bitcoin. Aquí, aquí, aquí. Aquí, 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 aquí. Necesito coin de bit. Sí, sí. Uh, yo necesito coin de bit uh, con un... <laughs> <laughs> I think I've been to Playa del Carmen. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I've been here. Bernie, why you always got to be so serious whenever we talk to you? Shout out, <laughs> shout out Playa del Carmen for, for being the place that I wanted to drop out and move to when I was 20. But my parents Yo, were like, I'm going there you soon. are not dropping yeah, out. It's like literally the, time. the most gorgeous place I've ever been. Oh, it's life, fantastic probably. there. Oh, I was there this for... year. We spent the whole day there, got rice and beans on the beach. Gorgeous. That sounds a little stereotypical, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we love stereotypical shit. Uh, <laughs> hey, basic. I mean, it seems like it was one, of, one of the five of us is a racist and, and, and the other four are not, so. <laughs> Randy's a basic white dude. Yeah, we, Randy, we actually what? met some random dude on the, at the, on the beach there that was, like, telling all these crazy stories and how he, like, describes the wind as it, like, flows over the palm trees. But he was, like, mad cool and really weird. It was awesome. It was a good time. Good story. Randy's the type of dude that travels for spring break, wears a tank top that says, I'm on spring break, beach. <laughs> With a fanny nah, pack. Nah. Yeah, he, he has a fanny pack and a low shelf pina colada and a coconut in his hands. <laughs> well, you're way off, man. Randy, aren't you glad you yeah, called yo, in? The swim shorts have like, have like prints of palm trees on them. <laughs> Just like shadows of palm trees. <laughs> And he's got the the uh, sunscreen all dabbed all over his nose too. <laughs> right, right. The mask of sunscreen. Oh, what is this? I just called in here to get shat on by you guys. It's like the kid in Sandlot. <laughs> Randy, what was your best trade of the day? I didn't make any good trades today. I bought Randy, NXT. No trade. What the fuck? I bought Randy's, NXT Randy's and ARDR. Trade? Was utilizing my follower account to show his BitMEX ref link. That was his best rate. <laughs> <laughs> my BitMEX ref, ref link is, uh, I got a one times long on that. Hey, yo, uh, onefox.ca, by the way. <laughs> Earn passive income. Yeah, Earn I don't passive understand income. why you Follow used Snortex the, you, and get wrecked. <laughs> why did you buy Message the one Fox? Crypto bully for, for, for refunds. <laughs> <laughs> one Fox is never coming out. What the fuck happened to Dave? Yo, I'm here. I ha- I, I'm here. 
<laughs> Donnie is Gucci putting shades. on his Gucci sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> like a real Fucking douche. Donnie. <laughs> That's why they call me the Don. Donnie douche. I'm fucking Donnie. The listeners can't see what we're seeing right now, but it is fucking classic. Basically, I have gold plated sunglasses. I, I have gold plated sunglasses on right now. It's very amusing. <laughs> oh, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. <laughs> all right, all right. Calm down, Eric Gardner. All right, all, all right. right. <laughs> um, so don't shoot. So what's I, everyone I thinking? Lux coin. Oh Lux man, coin. Lux coin. If you go to the Bitcoin talk thread on that thing, it looks like a bigger scam than whoever bought IOTA at $5. Like, it, it is unbelievable. <laughs> Please hey, edit man. that out. So that's how you know it's going to go up more. But he, he, <laughs> Come on, Donnie, just here. chill it for me, please. Here. Uh, producer uh, Callie, go ahead and uh, cut that. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Lux is going if to the moon. You, if you stay in crypto long enough, you'll start to realize if it's a scam, the larger the scam, the higher it pumps. So – Oh, BitConnect. <laughs> BitConnect, dude. Yo, fucking Any, DGB, that coin, piece of absolute coin, shit. That all, mother- of these, <clears throat> all these companies that claim that you can make $50,000 overnight, unless it's moonshotcrypto.com, then it's true. But- <laughs> <laughs> Donnie, but I can't believe you told all of your followers today to buy scam coins because those are the best ones to fucking <laughs> Dude, no. all of these are the totally the low in, Everybody's going to get 10,000. Oh, scam coins pump harder, man. I'm telling you. Scam coins pump harder because the de- the devs have... They do. They, yeah. they have incentive to pump their coins. We're laughing, so but he's ch- right. Yeah. yeah. So they can change it into Bitcoin. I mean, it's been like You're that. You're telling for- people to invest in a known scam. Okay? It doesn't work Excuse like that. Excuse me. How many of you showed Luxcore <laughs> in the past week? I think all three of you guys showed Lux going in the past week. That is Not a confirmed me. scam if you go to I the Bitcoin never. talk thread. That is a <laughs> scam if I've ever seen one. <laughs> you know what I want to talk about Please right edit now? That out. I don't know what you're talking about, Donnie. Yeah, I'm going to go on Twitter right now and uh, see if I ever did that. And if so, <laughs> delete it. <laughs> if, your bankroll, if your bankroll is sub one Bitcoin and you try and, – and your goal is to not be conservative, which you should be because – you know, you shouldn't want to lose all your money. But if you if you're want to degen it up and run it up to 100 bitcoins, God bless. Go on to Cryptopia, find the scammiest thing you can, set bids at like 10 satoshi, wait for a flash crash, and hope it pumps. I'm serious. That's the strategy. <laughs> Maybe Randy will stop PMing me to get like shills on Twitter. <laughs> Just do that, bro. Yo, fuck off. You hit me up about that shill, okay? <laughs> All right, you know what I want to talk about? I want to talk about Bcash. I want to talk about why Bcash fans get so triggered when you say Bcash. Prince? Okay, I just got blocked. I just got it's blocked a, just it's now a on Twitter. Bitcoin Cash, not Bcash. <laughs> <laughs> not Bitcoin Cash. It's a, it's a not Bitcoin Cash. <laughs> You do that. Perfect. <laughs> oh my god. I don't even know what to say. Like there are a lot of things I want to say, but I don't know if I should. Yeah. Uh, shout also, out Ro- there's also shout a lot out- of- Wait, can I just say uh shout out Roger Ver for putting a twenty nine hundred Bitcoin wall on Bitrex today. Someone someone yeah. happens to dump two hundred BTC into it to, to clear it out, and he gets afraid that he's gonna get dumped on. And it suddenly disappears. So shout out Roger <laughs> Bear for forking Bitcoin and providing me with hundreds of thousands of dollars in free money, theoretically. <laughs> and uh, yeah, shout out uh, whoever dumped on him today and got him really, really scared to pull his wall. You're welcome. Yeah, cheers, man. Thank you. <laughs> Tezos, what do you think yeah. of Donnie? Tezos, oh my god. This, this coin is like a Jerry Springer love triangle, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so you have Arthur Brightman, Kathleen Brightman, and then this dude that runs the foundation in Switzerland, yeah? So none of them seem to agree on anything, <laughs> okay? The second thing is, is you have Marissa Mayer levels of idiocy 
in in this foundation when Kathleen opens her mouth. She just like compared. How dare you, Donnie? I'm Marissa sorry. Marissa Mayer I mean, is an angel. Yeah, but she also <laughs> ran a company into the ground. So I mean, whatever. She's not too much of an angel. Um, <laughs> Basically, you have Kathleen Brightman on Reddit talking about how investing in Tezos entitles you to a tote bag. And I, 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 just, I just can't fathom if I was an investor in Tezos. I'm not because ICOs are scams, um, except for AirSwap. Buy AirSwap. Shout out, <laughs> shout out Obed. Great project. Um, but seriously, you're, you're, you're buying into this project. It raised $200 million. Oh, uh, uh, no, no. It, it's just a donation. Like, you just want to support the Tezos network. You gotta, you gotta be kidding me, right? Okay, you gotta be kidding me. There's no way. Yeah, I'll agree, man. I gotta say, like that, the amount of yeah, that, that part's just a donation. Too. You know, it is a load of crap, right? That's their legalities speaking there. But oh my it's god, like, yeah, it's such a load of crap. It's not a donation. But like, I get that that's like their legal speak. Yeah. But to come out and say it again in public yeah. is so stupid. And like to compare it to a tote bag, like your investors are looking at you when you say that and go, like, what the fuck? Like, you got to realize yeah. you had a lot of people who contributed money to this and a lot wow. of money. You cannot say things like that. And I don't care if it's true or not, or if you're saying it for like securities laws violations reasons or whatever. But you can't say that publicly. I mean, you, you got to understand that like. You know, the community is going to take whatever you say and run with it. So, yeah. well, wouldn't it be um, better just to not say it than to say it, right? What exactly? What? Just say nothing. That, that's yeah. the thing. Yeah. Unless it's positive, say nada if you're running any of these projects. I, I think the biggest thing that a lot of these projects suffer from is that they don't really understand. They're, they're incredibly talented with regards to technology and, and creativity and developing ideas, but they, Donnie Crypto, what? checking out. <laughs> I was just going to say. Paging Donnie. Wait. Donnie. Wait, what? It's frozen Paging. in time. To the it's the glasses. freaking shades, man. <laughs> oh, there he is. Shout out. Shout out. Louis, shout out uh, Green Street Louis Vuitton for providing me with these sunglasses. I'll expect a, I'll expect a sponsorship you tomorrow. You cut out for like a there, bro. No, no, Donnie, I hope you didn't say anything valuable because you went frozen well, on my screen. Well, uh, well, well shout, he'll capture I'll, it. I'll repeat myself. Just didn't hear it. Shout out Louis Vuitton on Green Street for providing me with these sunglasses. I will expect oh, yeah, yeah, a sponsorship yeah, yeah, yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> Donnie, you need to uh, spend those million contracts on a new Wi-Fi network. <laughs> it's pretty hey, bad look, that man. I'm in Iowa and have a better Wi-Fi than you, Don. <laughs> hey, look, man. Some of us are on he a bunch of okay? Iowa, bro. I'm on, I'm on test yeah, now, You Randy. sound like shit, too. I'm on Tesla right now. I'm on Tesla. What can you tell? Yeah, this is the competition for shittier connection. Uh, Donnie, Randy, or Dale? <laughs> is my connection shot too? Oh, yours is garbage, Randy. Dale, yeah, Dale's connection is ruined by Christmas lights, so I respect that. <laughs> hey, question. I know the viewers can't see, but Randy, why do you got a bottle of lotion next to your bed? <laughs> That's my face lotion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Randy's got shea butter. What of it? <laughs> hey, nobody likes dry skin. <laughs> yeah, dry oh. skin is for fucking plebs. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I guess well, we should get this wrapped up. Uh, Donnie, last words. Go ahead and, and chill everybody moonshot. Why don't you? All right. So if you are interested in a sentiment analysis program that will provide you with instant updates on the market curated so that you don't have to scroll through Twitter. You don't have to subscribe to any other website for catalysts, but you get all the latest information instantly for less than 0.025 Bitcoin per month. Hit me up at Donnie crypto on telegram at Donnie crypto on Twitter. We're going to be releasing a dashboard that blows block folio out of the water going to be releasing a charting tool that blows Coinigy out of the water in the next month to month and a half. And people are going to love the project. You're going to see my shills all over Twitter where our members are just so excited about everything that we have going on. Please hit me up. Uh, and continue to short on BitMEX because you are paying <laughs> for not only my retirement, but for my kids' and my grandkids' retirement. So thank you so much. <laughs> Yeah, I would never trade BitMEX because, uh, for obvious reasons, but if I did, I would not short no, on there either. Never short. <clears throat> you don't short Bitcoin. Randy, what do you want to close show. with? I just, you know, I want to say first, uh, that was a great show, Donnie. Um, <laughs> you know, it's going to be tough to uh, come after that. But um, a big shout out to Luke Martin. Hung out with him uh, and Donnie last week. He's the man. I hope you guys get him on here. 
Uh, shout out to Coin Yeezy. Uh, at Coin Yeezy on Twitter, that's my boy. He uh, he brought me into crypto. He's a real smart dude, and uh, he should get to follow. And then, uh, you know, you don't follow me for uh, for trading advice, but if you need a logo, if you need uh, some artwork done for your brand, hit me up at LogoBilly, LogoBilly.com, uh, you know, Instagram.com slash LogoBilly. You know, I do good stuff. And since I'm the yeah, most that's honest super person good work, here, by the way. Yeah. Like, definitely check that out. Yeah, Quality check that stuff. out. It's good shit. All right, well, um, everyone, thanks. Hopefully you had a good laugh there. I know my goddamn stomach hurts from <laughs> laughing and even just looking at Donnie <laughs> right now. <laughs> thanks for tuning in. As always, tip your waitress and, um, yeah, rock and roll. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I'll have a tip, I'll, I'll have a tip jar on Twitter if you want to dumb in me point oh one. Some of us are on a budget. Twitter traders, we work for ourselves, so everything's appreciated. <laughs> Much love, yeah, right? same here. All right, see you guys. All right, later. Later.